This is Kanzen Shu, the podcast, episode 371 for the week of November 23rd, 2014. What up, Aos? Welcome back to Kanzen Shu. We have a podcast? We have a podcast. It's an extension of our all encompassing Dragon Ball fan site. Kanzen Shu. That's right. We cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening the little bitch. Oh, the entertaining. It is wonderful to be back. I'm so confused. I don't know how to do this anymore. My name is Mike Vegito EX, joining me from a hotel room. Sup, Heath? It's Hugio. I'm here. It's the Hugio. How you doing? Like I said, what's how do we do this thing? It's been like, so long. Though if you're following the website, I've seen uh, a couple good responses of, oh, okay, I understand now. <laughs> and people have been asking me, I'm like, just hold on. You will understand why there hasn't been a podcast. And thankfully, people seem to be rather understanding of it. We will talk about our magazine shortly to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Dragon Ball. And actually, Heath, this week, nine years ago, Julian and I hooked up some terrible microphones and started this podcast and look what happened and that was just the podcast then you go back a few more years and january we'll be hitting another anniversary of the website yes anniversaries all around we got mike we got heath we are here to talk about dragon ball it's an exciting time because we have a new movie on the way and uh, i think we just broke down for you what the episode is going to be about it's going to be about the movie it's going to be about the magazine that's our dragon show ball kai and all, yeah, forget it. all Dragon Ball Kai, all Boo Arc. All, t- just forget everything else. That's all we're going to do. You're totally up on it. You want to give me the ins and outs, all the edits, all the musical cues. You're ready to go? All right, hit me. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Not even if you gave me some prep time. I would end up doing something else. People have asked me. I'm I'm a terrible fan. I still have not seen a single minute outside of the openings and endings. Well, the opening and endings. I It's Kai. Who cares? I'm getting real negative, but... Uh, I, I got to be a little punchy this episode to make sure I get through it because I haven't done this in a while. Yes, it's been about two months since we've had a podcast episode, uh, but we're ready. We're willing. Heath, let's talk about news. It's been about four months since we've had any real significant news about the upcoming movie, which we didn't have a name for up until this last week. We put up a post on July 25th called the Dragon Ball Z 2015 new movie, the facts and what we know so far. And that's where we covered things like the initial teaser, uh, the teaser trailer that came out, the there's someone I want you to revive, the worst wish in history. It was all that preliminary information we had. And at that point, that was all we had. We had a couple taglines, a couple quotes from this non-narrated teaser with what we can all pretty much 100% assume is not actual animation from the film. And we've just been sitting on this for a while and it's been pretty quiet, but that's pretty much what we expected, right? Pretty much. It's it's following suit with Battle of Gods, yeah, you know, yeah. with, with a little bit more cushion. But really now we found out an actual release date when it's going to premiere. It's not really that far off from where they originally were with Battle of Gods. I think it's only like a two-week difference. Yeah, I mean, we heard Golden Week, and we'll get into all this information, but it's coming uh, slightly earlier than that. But, I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're right on schedule for where we expect the promotional cycle to be. So what I kind of wanted to do here in our news segment is recap that news, because I'm already seeing so much stuff out there where it's just that telephone game going on where you get the initial Japanese to English, and I, I feel like we do a pretty good job of setting the stage for here's what the information says here's what you're probably going to see implied by it but that's not necessarily what it says but as it makes its way out there stuff just gets twisted and turned you've already seen so many things like it's gonna be two hours it absolutely will have super saiyan god vegeta frieza's gonna have kula's fifth form like there's already so much what we can probably assume is wrong information we don't know for sure but we don't know for sure snowballs yeah exactly so let's start with uh, how this all goes down. Really interesting these days. It's V-Jump that is uh, breaking everything, Heath. Yeah, it's it's one of those weird things because a lot of times it's it's in Psycho Jump, it's in V-Jump, and it's in Weekly Shonen Jump. Right. So it's really a matter of, well, whoever out there gets their hands on which issue first, <laughs> that's what makes it. Right. So, 
And V Jump comes out on the 21st of every month, except for holidays. Right. Like maybe it's a day earlier or something. And I mean, let's ignore leak dates for now because I mean, that's not really how the schedule goes. But right. V Jump, I mean, depending on when the 21st of a month is, is most likely going to be before a Monday or if it's right well, after that Monday. I mean, no matter where in the week it is, I feel like we, we're going to see V Jump before we see V right. Jump. And it's a lot easier for someone to get their hands on V Jump because it has a month of production. Right. Whereas right. Weekly Shonen Jump has a week. And then we've had this whole thing with Psycho Jump, and maybe I'll insert some extra news right here. That's Dragon Ball SD Volume 3, the collected edition, is actually going to be coming out in December. There was a full year between Volumes 1 and 2, and now we have significantly less than a year between 2 and 3, and maybe that's because Psycho Jump just went bi-monthly when it clearly was never intended to go bi-monthly. And what's going on with that magazine? <laughs> so you have to wonder, Shueisha's looking looking at V Jump and Weekly Jump as their main promotional vehicles for Dragon mm -hmm. Ball. Psycho Jump is just as ancillary thing. If they get anything in there, great. So we really are looking at V Jump as our primary advertising monster for the new movie. And you wouldn't think that the video game magazine is it, but it has become that central location. And I'm fine with that. V Jump usually has much better paper quality. It does. So yeah. <laughs> from that standpoint, I appreciate it. <laughs> right. And we get a couple page spreads because I mean, it's yep. content, but it's also an advertisement. So mm -hmm. they can uh, advertise their own stuff very incestuously. It's really great. So we're looking here at the January 2015 issue of V-Jump. Again, V-Jump comes out the 21st of every month. So November 21st is when the January issue came out. And of course there were leaks. So we got some things a couple days early. And then as Julian was able to pick up the issue, we kind of dug and got everything else we needed to know. But here we go, man. It's the poster for the movie. It's the name of the movie. So we have Dragon Ball Z Fukatsu no F. So let's break down some of this stuff. Dragon Ball Z. All right, I think mm -hmm. we're good there. I'm just going to throw this out because I know a lot of other people have said it, and I'm going to yep. I find it very humorous that as the series has gone on, at least movie-wise, we've yeah. gone from Dragon Ball Z, that's it for the first movie. Their you know, subtitle is added later. Then every subsequent movie after that had this just giant, you know, Enormous fight to save title. the earth, we're a million times, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. Now it's... Short. That's it. There's a revival of F. Yep. Boom. Well, let's break that down. So the Japanese title here, Fukatsu no F, Fukatsu. It's mm -hmm. the same word that was in DBZ Movie 12, Fukatsu no Fusion Goku to Vegeta. We have translated that ourselves as the revival of Fusion. You'll see Fusion revived. I believe Funimation did Fusion reborn. Uh, it's all the same. Resurrection is a word you're going to see a lot out there with regard to mm -hmm. this because there's a wish involved. And we were tossing this around. I think it was the last minute that I was talking with Julian like, all right, I'm posting this live. We need to commit to what our translation of this title is going to be. And so we really just looked at how had we translated Fukatsu before in terms of a wish and revival resurrections coming back to life and we just ended up with revival of f i mean it's pretty simple mm -hmm. it's good you'll see a resurrection it's not wrong no no and uh, until something's definitely set which it may never be yeah then well here's the thing we'll go with as you were very clear when you were posting about this, this movie so far does not have two titles. Battle of Gods, we just call it Battle of Gods, but in Japan, it's really known as Kami to Kami, God and God, with the English subtitle of Battle of Gods. It's not the same title in Japanese and in English. It's two separate titles in two mm -hmm. separate languages attached to the same film. This is just one title in Japanese so far. Right. And Battle of Gods is unique. It was the only one that was like that. Yeah, so it was nice for us English speaking folk, you know, to just have an, an English title to go with. Right. But yeah, Kami Tokami is often forgotten. So we got the title of it and we got the release date. It's coming April 18th. And like you were saying, it's not too far off from Battle of Gods, which was a March 30th in 2013. Yeah. I mean, originally when they said Golden Week, you know, which falls between I think it's April 26th and 25th 26th yeah so and then it's that week it's like it goes from a wednesday to a wednesday and we were thinking well you know if you're shooting for that you're looking like first week of may last week of april and i you know this turns out to be the saturday is the weekend before we start 
everything. So as Julian was thinking, this is probably, you know, even though it's a little bit earlier than we expected, it's actually a good spot to start because the movie can come out. People can go see it and then maybe you can take your kids or right, right. a date or so, you know, you'll have an entire week where everyone in the country literally is not working or going to school. Yeah, you get so. to capitalize on that full week off as opposed to maybe missing a couple of those days. So mm-hmm. build a little bit more of that early hype those first couple of days, get everyone out there. Makes total sense. I mean, it's a little weird because they did say Golden Week. It's kind of like fudging it a little bit, like out holiday season 2015 kind of thing. Right. So, so yeah. they, they committed without committing. Let's talk about this poster because uh, this is what people have really been diving into. And we've since gotten a cleaner version of it that sent out to all the media sites like um, the big one. Yeah, I don't there. know if you've noticed, but yeah. there's actually two different versions of the movie poster. OK, and what's different about them? Uh, just the character placements. Of oh, yeah, yeah. Sorbet and Tagoma and they move the title around. So it's really just kind of like I don't really know why they did it. But they did that with Battle of Gods early on. If you look at the progression mm-hmm. of that poster, things are a little bit enlarged here, a little bit moved over here, and it's just how it is. So it's interesting yeah. they're already doing that so early. All right, well, let's talk about it. So, I mean, first things first, Frieza's in the middle. This is the revival of Frieza. The F is for Frieza, or if you will, Frieza, 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 Frieza. Very exciting. Can I can I admit that uh, when this first came out, I went and I listened to that single. I'm pretty sure we all did. And may we insert here, if it's not in the movie, it's criminal. Mm-hmm. I mean... I, I also um, made a comment that I think it would be great, not only if that was in, or at least an instrumental of mm-hmm. it of some sort, but if he, Toriyama just told Toei straight up, uh, you need to have Maximum the Hormone write the ending theme. I would... Here's... I mean, we had Flo do Hedgehala and their own insert song, Hero, Song of Hope. What mm-hmm. I think we need in this movie is Maximum the Hormone contributing F as is, and then they do a cover of We Got a Power. Sold. I mean... Okay. <laughs> we Got a Power doesn't quite work with Frieza. I mean, that was Hedgehala in that era, but I mean, that's never stopped them from doing whatever with the songs at any point so all right moving on that is frieza what do you think about the very different aura surrounding frieza is this an indication that he's going to receive his own type of godly upgrade or an equivalent thereof what are your early thoughts early thoughts and we can say um, at this point we don't know this we don't know we're giving you our predictions yes at this point. we already know that when he is revived there's something that happens in a addition to it there has to be what it is we don't know so right well i want to stop there because i've seen a lot of people saying is the wish simply to bring back frieza i'm under the impression that frieza coming back is either intended or unintended like a side consequence of the wish like it's not an explicit wish hey bring back frieza it may be but i feel like if it's this truly awful thing it's someone got more than they asked for but at the same time we know that sorbet and tagoma are remnants of Frieza's army. So that may be specifically what they're after. I don't know. I'm really confused and conflicted here. Well, and the other thing that um, has been brought up is now at this stage of the story, especially in the manga, although it is a little confusing, that uh, Dende's dragon actually grants multiple wishes. Well, I mean, we had that question. In some way they could incorporate that, but Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, as far as the aura is concerned... I think it does have something to do with him being brought back. What? I have no idea. And I don't even want to guess at this point because I'm probably going to be totally wrong. Yeah, I've made it very clear that I have next to zero interest in the conversation about Freeze is so weak compared to where everyone Mm -hmm. is now. How do they make it? So It's the job of the writers to make a convincing story. And if they're bringing Freeze back, and specifically if Toriyama is bringing Freeze back for this, I'm sure there will be at least some passing reference to why he's so much stronger now. Like, I'm not concerned with that. But I look at this aura and I think maybe that is the reason that he's able to then compete on the same level if not higher than everyone else you know right or does he finally get his ultimate wish of immortality granted Mm. and he somehow needs by he i mean goku needs the help of 
gods Mm -hmm. to defeat someone that is that cannot be killed so there are so many questions that are up in the air that we're not gonna know we don't know but it's so fun to speculate i was just gonna say that like i remember doing this with battle of gods you Mm -hmm. go back you listen to us for about six months wonder if Whis was a makayoshin i mean we're starting that conversation again right now just with other characters and the new movie it's uh i love but the weird part is is that we're doing speculation on a character that we've already known about. Right. We know his backstory. <laughs> Let's move on, because we've seen other characters that we've seen before. Mm-hmm. But before we get to them, we kind of have to go to the other main two here. That's Goku and Vegeta. Goku is sporting a different dogi here. He doesn't have an undershirt, and he has a very different symbol on the front here that doesn't look like anything we've seen before. So what do you think is going on there? Is it just a design, or is it... I really don't know. A, a lot of what's... Th- Floated around my head has changed from day to day. Yeah. Um, is this some sort of special training? I've seen a lot of spirits and we training Goku. Yeah. We don't know. Are we in some alternate dimension where the wish part of the consequent is like everybody is moved somewhere else? Mm. You know, these are the things that start flying around that we don't know about. Either way, I think it would just be amazing to watch so the more and more that comes out i'm getting really excited for this i mean i feel like everything we talk about is i don't know but i'm excited Mm kind of like goku himself exactly i mean it's interesting to note that the goku is wearing something different vegeta is as well yeah let's talk about how different that i mean it's not entirely different but there are differences i mean he still has the armor yeah the armor looks just slightly different than what he's typically worn of that era yeah but then what's underneath his armor is completely different. It comes up higher on his neck and it's it's just different. It looks like it it zips or it separates somehow and Yeah. Yeah, I I guess the first thing that popped out to me was was Gohan. Well, all right, let's go there because I was on Team Yamcha for the longest time. I know. Just... I was back and forth and the more I thought about it, I I assumed it was Gohan mostly because I thought it would be a little odd to put Yamcha. Gohan on makes the cover, sense, but, but... It, I mean, if you also go down the sides, kind of like, all right, it's the Sayonara characters. Like, no matter who that would have been, it would have made sense in some capacity. Mm-hmm. But I guess we can say we got the Gohan confirmation from when the official site updated with everything. And everything is just a nice, lossless, transparent ping with file names attached to them. It was Gohan.ping. So it's like, okay, I guess that's Gohan. Why could they not do that back in the day? Oh, you go back to the old websites and everything's just... Flash. Uh, flash files that don't have their individual components anymore. It's terrible. Yeah. But yeah, so we have Piccolo, Gohan, I guess, and then we have Kudidin. When And not only what he's wearing, but his hair. Yes. All right. Well, I thought his hair was very interesting. Although the track suit, I love because it's very Toriyama. It totally and in is. my head, the first thing that, you know, popped in there, I was thinking, did he become like a PE teacher at, you know, <laughs> some point? Is right. that what he's doing now with his education? <laughs> or maybe he's just out for a jog. Who knows? That could be. All right, let's keep That's going. That's what Toriyama does. Let's keep going down because we've got Baldi here and everyone's saying, why does he look like he did during the Saiyan arc? Why doesn't he have his hair now? Because Toriyama forgot. That and- could be it. I mean, <laughs> a movie poster is simply a movie poster. Mm-hmm. I feel it's more reminiscent of almost just a nostalgia throwback of yeah, we're yeah. bringing Frieza back. So we're kind of going to make the some of the characters look like how they used to. Because I'm kind of on board with the whole thing of he just shaved his head. It, yeah, he, he can. Because he can totally do that. There's there's nowhere in there, well, that's a stupid answer that he would just shave. Well, I shave my face and then I go like two months and I don't shave my face. Does that mean that I'm a stupid person? Well. No. Or I, lazy. I, I'd argue That's that. debatable. Well, here's the thing. Maybe it's. He's gonna get, I mean, this is the villain who killed, I mean, we've had, he's died twice, but this is a villain who killed him. Maybe he decides he wants to fight, so he shaves his head again and gets ready for battle. I mean, there's nothing stopping that from happening. That could Mm -hmm. be a scene that explains it, and there we go. That very well could be. I think it'd be hilarious just for old time's sake. Frieza kind of downgrades himself back to his second form. Yeah, And just spears (laughs) (laughs) Krillin. All right, let's jump to the other side. We have Beerus and Whis. We heard from Toriyama that, of course, this will be a continuation of Battle of Gods, and we didn't know how to read that. Did that mean literally the story continues on and contains those same characters just in that style of a continuation is it mm-hmm. the next year we didn't really know we still don't know a whole lot other than Beerus and Weiss are here 
See, and that's the other thing that, in a way, to me, I almost think it'd be neat if part of the wish was either everyone was taken back in time, although I hate saying that because I don't want to incorporate time travel, but some sort of alternate universe, and that's why some of these characters look this way. Because I found it interesting, like, Goten and Trunks are nowhere to be seen. Yeah, yeah. At least in the movie poster. My other question then is, Beerus and Whis, how much of a role do they actually play? I mean, it's significant that they're on the movie poster, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, who else are they going to put there? Because it's kind of nice to know they're in the movie. You want to sell that point. But at the same time, you kind of leave out other characters. So it's, you know, a catch-22. Something I want to address, you're talking about alternate universes. Something, you know, Jake is very insistent on is that what's said in the movie and then onward more implied in the Chozenshu is that the alternate universes that Beerus mentions in the film are probably most likely not just here's another universe with Goku right. and in this universe he never hit his head. Right. And that is totally not what I'm talking about. Okay. But so you're almost talking about within yeah, the you're same talking about universe. Like multiple universes. I'm talking about within the same but like there's a mirror to our world mm. and that's where the, they end up or something like that. Now would Toriyama actually do that honestly i don't think he would because he's often said how much he actually ended up disliking doing the whole cell time travel <laughs> thing confusing. because it, he literally got confused he couldn't keep up with what he had already done i mean we had four so, cells and 29 trunkses and yeah it was kind to of this confusing. day they can't make a proper timeline in a guidebook to <laughs> no, explain it they took out that fourth one <laughs> Yeah. They finally said, well, you know what? Let's get rid of that one. All right, let's uh, move on here because we have two new characters. Just as uh, I feel like it's been great from the Jump Super Anime Tour special where I guess technically we had four new characters in that. But uh, mm-hmm. then Battle of Gods, we've got two here with the revival of F. We have another two characters. We have Sorbet and Tagoma. And the name puns are kind of as expected. They are more things that you would keep in your refrigerator. Do you want to break down what they are? I mean, if you don't know what sorbet is, I can't really help you. Well, sorbet is a a frozen dessert. In the U.S., it's a little bit different than other parts of the world. Other parts of the world, it's kind of what you would consider an icy here in the U.S. um, Mm. kind of thing. Yeah, apparently I did too much research on sorbet. Tagoma is just a the Japanese word for egg, just rearranged. And which you can tell his head kind of looks like an egg. And yes. sorbet is smaller and round, like a scoop of sorbet. Right, that's all there is to it. It's it's fun to note that, like Beerus and Weiss, these two are also designed by Toriyama. And I love his original sketches for them. Yeah, they're great. Because they, they do look a little bit different than what we see on the poster. Now, I'm so glad you picked this out because we have a character that has a very different kind of scouter. And believe it or not, we heard about this months ago and kind of just skimmed over it. But because we have everything documented, I'm so glad you're like, oh, wait. That was a thing. Mm -hmm. So what was this? So back in the July 2014 issue of Psycho Jump, uh, Naho Oishi interviews kind of does a little q a with toriyama and in this specific one she wants to discuss the scouters now the the fun part about when they do these little interviews with oishi you kind of wonder is there someone like a publicist or an editor in the background saying here are some questions yeah. you should ask or <laughs> stick to this topic right. sort of thing she's not really asking the questions but she wanted to discuss scouters so she asked him what the difference was between the older model and the newer model scouters and he goes into you know different attachments that you can have and each one's made specifically for that alien race's ear things like that you can custom order them apparently (laughs) which is really cool because now i want to which this opens up the market for so many different scouter toys Yep, new merchandise in the interview toriyama says if you're a soldier in frieza's army you can have one made to order to fit your ear the different screen colors can be chosen to fit the peculiarities of the different alien races eyes or to suit one's taste and then he notes at the end and i emphasize this also Dual eye types exist as well. And that's that's all he says about it. He just throws it in. And, of course, we read it and we're like, oh, yay, scouters, woo. It totally comes back. And the first thing that popped in my head is, really? Maybe at this point in time, when he made this comment back in, well, it it's was July, the July 2014 so issue. but it, yeah. June or earlier. June or a little earlier. He may have just gotten done doing some character designs or is doing rough sketches of them. And so it was fresh in his head and he just... 
threw it out. And nobody really caught it because it didn't mean anything at the time. No, there were a whole bunch of scouter Q&As all in a row. And then there was this, what, yeah. seven or eight question thing in Weekly Jump. And it was all just kind of nonsense babble. And then even if something like this gets tossed in, it's, okay, whatever. He's just babbling about scouters. So either he remembered he said that and he pulled that aside and wanted to use it. I think Either way, I think it's really likely. cool ideas to... To do some of this stuff to kind of, you're doing the same thing. You have the same types of armor, the the same scouters, but he's switching it up a little and making yeah. it different. Which even um, in the magazine it noted with the rough design sketches that, that he sent in, that they're wearing new, you know, like the newest armor. Mm-hmm. So it kind of almost makes it seem like Frieza's minions are still out there, well, organized, apparently. <laughs> clearly they are. I mean, we had the Jump Super Anime Tour special. We had Dragon Ball Online. These Frieza's forces, or the remnants of Frieza's army, seems to be a mm-hmm. recurring plot point. There's a lot more to get into within V-Jump itself. So I want to do two things. I want to read the actual plot summary, I suppose we can say, and then we get to the, the, the cool musical inspired news. So just uh, real brief, the summary here. Earth is now at peace, but then the remnants of Frieza's forces, Sorbet and Tagama, attack. Their objective is to bring Frieza back from the dead with the Dragon Balls. And so the worst wish in history of the universe is granted. And F, plotting his revenge against the Saiyans, is revived at last. Dot, dot, dot. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Excitement. And then we get the confirmation of what uh, probably should have been obvious from the title alone. And if you go back a couple years in the news, makes sense. Toriyama directly inspired by, in some capacity, Maximum the Hormones tribute to Frieza, simply called F. From a few years ago, uh, this uh, the concept of the movie in some capacity. Again, we don't know if he came up with it first and then thought of it was unconsciously inspired by it. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to know the true story, but he does say that, yes, this is a thing. And he says, just like they went ahead and just did it without asking me, I went ahead and did it without asking them. And here we have F being Frieza, uh, in some way inspired by Maximum the Hormone, and they're, uh, you can't really call it a fan song anymore, can you? No, not really. I mean, gosh, he's met them. It's almost like this official image insert song that has not been used in Mm -hmm. anything yet, which is great. Yeah, it's like, you know, he says, uh, to say thank you, I decided to just go with F, mostly because he thought it looked cool. (laughs) It does look cool. And and you hear that from Toriyama all the time. Toriyama will just say, well... I did that because I thought it sounded cool or I thought it looked cool. Right. So I just did it. It's like he doesn't give a crap. He's just going to do it. So along with this news, we reposted the sketch he did for the band uh, a couple of years ago in 2012 when he went out to a concert of theirs uh, in Nagoya, where he is from. So nice little meetings there. And I think that kind of takes us to where we are and what we know. Um, I mean, we've gotten some higher quality images of the poster and the characters, like you said. And this is just we're in heavy speculation, having fun mode. So if if you do want the facts, we actually do have a page up on the website now. It's live. So it's live as of literally, I think, 30 minutes ago. As always with, with our pages, I mean, it's just facts. Whatever facts have come out, I mean, there's really no opinion in there at all. If you need a good place to source... This, that's the place to go. If you want the opinions and the speculation, then come to the podcast. Yeah, you're that's listening to here. it right now. That's right. <laughs> the editorializationizing happens here on the show. Always. I think that's going to wrap up our news. I mean, there's been some other stuff and some of it's exciting, but the movie is the most exciting thing. And we still have some other stuff to catch up on. I mean, Xenoverse I is coming. Got to get ready for that in February. And uh, oh my God. Um, all right, let's leave the news behind. We will get back to you with all the other news soon here on the podcast. We're still recovering. That's right. We are. We are totally still recovering. But right now, let's talk about why there has not been a podcast in quite some time. All right, Mike, why haven't we had a podcast in like five years? <laughs> it's only been two months, although in internet years, that's an eternity. Uh, well, for starters, I went on vacation and I was going to take some time off around then for the podcast and whatever. Mm-hmm. But then that turned into crap. We have the 30th anniversary 
of the series coming up. What are we going to do? We've brought it up in the past, but we never really had a discussion about it. And we're all it's like, oh, like, yeah, that, that's coming. We'll, we'll think of something. We'll do something. Yep. And we didn't really talk about it. And we should have. And then I had the bright idea to make a magazine. And then I said, well, crap, I better get this done. And I haven't really slept in two months. <laughs> I, don't, I still remember the first email I got about it. <laughs> well, first first I sent an email and said, hey, this is a good idea. And then I think 23 hours later was another one that said, well, I started. You did. You sent out an email and you're like, well, sh- I really like this idea. I think we should do it. And I remember I was really busy at work and I'm like, I'm going to reply to him. I'll get back and to I was this. literally yeah. typing my email back to you. And I get another one like, well, I did it. I got this and this and this is what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing everyone was on board because otherwise I would have been a sad mic. So I was quasi inspired by this. This had been sitting in my mind for a while now. There was this fan celebration e-magazine is what they called it done for Final Fantasy back. Uh, I don't even remember when, when this was maybe a year or two ago, something like that. And it was really interesting. It was a bunch of fan sites that got together and uh, just talked about the series did retrospectives and all the different games and some interviews and stuff. And it was cool. It just really looks like an amateur fan production. Like it you mm-hmm. couldn't it could not stand on its own as a legitimate hold in your hand production and be like, oh wow, this looks really cool. I would spend money on this. It was just lots of love went into it. And it's it was kind of the equivalent of if you read in our magazine, and it's the actual last article in the magazine, our buddy Ryan, Caster Troy, yep. who ran uh Ginga Giri Giri, was talking about the different types of fan sites that existed over the years. And I really loved what he talked about there. With it was this batch of new sites from new fans that were so enthusiastic about it, but they had never made a website before. They didn't know what design was. They had no background in visual arts or anything like that. But there was so much heart in those sites. And that's what I felt from this Final Fantasy fan magazine. So this just sat in the back of my head for quite some time until the time came for us to do something. I was like, we could do that. And then I get really egotistical about it. I'm like, but we're Konzenshu. We could do something really fucking awesome. And then I kind of forget that we have to actually do that work <laughs> to make yes. it look and come we, across. We that always way. have aspirations that are a little too high. Right. But it's always nice when we hit them. I think we I pulled mean, it off. I, I mean, yeah. I haven't heard negative responses. There may be some out there and you're just not telling me. And please hold them back. My fragile soul can't take it. So what we ended up doing was something very similar. It was an anniversary magazine. It, it truly is a magazine. It's laid out like a real magazine. To be honest, I bought a professional template for a magazine. Like While I know how to mm-hmm. do this stuff, to get it done in time, I would not have been able to do a yeah. magazine layout from scratch so I worked from a template some of the designs are exactly the same as they are on the template some of them basically didn't exist I just combined things to get what I needed to fit where I basically did a real production on a magazine in two months and the thing is um because we used InDesign to do it right and the hard part was really you could only have one person editing and that's what really sucked because i know i wanted to when you have you we'd have to share the file back and forth and who did what who did what what's been changed yeah you know who has the most recent file and (laughs) that was hard enough it just worked out to say hey hey mike you (laughs) you have at it you just tell me how your day is going (laughs) and so i did Yeah. There were a lot of emails like, I need this. I need it 12 hours ago. Where is it? Julian. Oh my God. Stay up. Finish writing. So I did. I stayed up one night until like midnight, just scanning and oh my God. taking I, screenshots. I appreciated and- <laughs> it that next morning. It was like my holy I'm grail sure to wrap things up. So, I mean, enough about me and the production process. It was, this is what we wanted to do. What is something that we haven't done before? And that's going back to, if you want to go all the way back to Vegito EX's homepage, things I wanted to do that either were sort of done before, but done really terribly or had never been done before. is kind of why I started mm-hmm. the podcast. It was like, all right, I run a Dragon Ball site. We're really big. What else can we do that no one has done before that lets us expand our own fandom, other people's fandom, get everyone to connect in a different way. And that's kind of how I approach this as well. It's like, all right, there's been Beckett, I guess, <laughs> like those kind of things. But there really hasn't been anything like this where it's fans coming together with reflections and that kind of stuff. Mary has mm-hmm. this, uh, it's, it's a 
paperback book of basically this kind of stuff where it's reflections and essays on the X-Men series. So it has like some bigger name folks that may have actually worked on the series in some capacity and they got thoughts from them as well. So I really took this Final Fantasy online fan magazine and this X-Men book that Mary loves. And I've actually read it before. It's been years since I've read it, but it was really, really interesting. Kind of combined those. And that's what I wanted to accomplish. So I wanted to have fans. I wanted to have friends. I wanted to have people that maybe worked on it somehow from around the globe that have lapsed in their fandom, came back to it, like music, video games, manga, research, everything. I think that's what we did. I think so. (laughs) I think I accomplished what I wanted to. And it was impossible to get everyone. And part of it was, I know we're working on this in secret. So it's like, I can't quite, (laughs) <laughs> it's it is a fan production so it's not like i can be sending out ndas to people being like you will agree not to talk about this thing that we're working on because we're so cool <laughs> i, I don't want to quite hit that level so i did have to kind of keep it to who i knew who i could trust to actually write yeah, it was kind of like, a who you can trust yeah like i need this yesterday and are you really going to be able to write this so that's kind of how we approached the people now now that this is out there and there is a possibility of maybe doing more of these in the future obviously that can expand and some of the people that i wanted to include but couldn't do to like you know page length and simply mm-hmm. time and more languages and all that stuff hopefully we can do that so i do want to talk about the content like we were kind of alluding to there, where we have everything. So it's ostensibly a celebration of the manga, right? You know, it's the manga's 30th anniversary, November 20th. But Dragon Ball is so much more than the manga itself. So you look in there, I mean, the first article is from our buddy Joe about Super Butoden. That's not really the manga, but it's Dragon Ball has made fans of so many people in so many different ways. How do you capture that excitement? That's what I wanted to do. And that's how those kind of articles came to be. Now, Heath, I'm, I'm just too close to this production like i don't i don't see words anymore i don't see yeah. images anymore it's just this blob of like everyone else's articles i feel like i've written because i've touched them so many times so as someone who was watching it being made and then got to see the final production i, I feel like i'm kind of interviewing you about it how did you see it coming together and less about our side of things and more about the content from other people for me uh i mean honestly what what i did was was follow along as you were doing it, and I wrote my own articles haphazardly, I might admit, um, you know, here and there. Um, one I kind of had written, the other ones kind of came together. I think one I wrote two days before. But <laughs> um, okay. so I, I had read my own articles. I knew what I had written. Um, yeah, you and I were, honestly, you were holding I off. decided, you know what, I'm not going to read what anyone else had written besides, I think, your intro and a little bit of what Caster had written. Other than that, I mean, I wanted... To be able to experience it all done. Now, the hard part of that is visually it it changed so much from day to day. Didn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. every hour I was uploading a new version. Oh, there were many times I would I would go to reference something in it and be like, oh, do I need to get this picture for Mike? Or just read something to see if you had put my whatever I had written up yet uh-huh. and the file would not be available. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you, you can't view this right now. I'm like, well, why not? Where'd it go? And then 30 seconds later, it'd be there. Right. But it, it was just really, really neat to watch happen from my perspective because I am usually in your seat where when I put web pages together, mm-hmm. I mean, I what, what everyone else sees at the end, I get to watch happen. And so it's it's really kind of neat in this instance to flip it. And I actually got to see it's it's neat because you can watch somebody's thought process almost. You can see it happen of where do I want this? What picture do I want? Mm -hmm. Or how you and I are so similar and we throw in random ass pictures that have nothing to do with that (laughs) article, but it's just a placeholder because you know you want a picture there. Right. And sometimes that placeholder turns into an article that then surrounds it. Like that was was never supposed to be there, but then turned into it. So um, from that though, having gone back once it, um, I think the morning before we released it, I started going through and reading things. And I know we had a lot of emails from people ahead of time, you know, people that we had contacted saying, well, what should I write about? Yeah, yeah. Write whatever you want for the fandom. Let me talk about you that know? a little bit, because there were some people that I said, here's what I want you to write about. There were a couple yeah, people true. that were, 
I have a vague idea. I was like, all right, let's talk it out and let me iron things down. Okay, someone's already writing about this, but this angle is a little bit different than that. So, for example, mm-hmm. Alex was going to write about some fan sub kind of stuff as well and kind of the early Funimation notion Saban day. It's like, all right, well, Mary's already written her article about fan subs specifically. It's like, okay, well, I was also thinking about the One Piece side of things. Now I transition. It's like, that's great because Greg just wrote about the crossover and you can go right after that. And that's a perfect segue. And I have a page and one column to fill. Done. <laughs> it'd be those yeah. kind of things. And then there was Sean. I'm going to pick on him a little bit. I was like, I want you to write about something. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Write this. Oh, that's a good idea. And I'm going to draw something. Great. Thank you. So that's how that happened. You know, it was really nice just to see everybody else's fandom because it's it's one thing we've always talked about is how different it really is. Yeah, it is to everyone. And not only what you like about the series, but your experiences. And I've always felt that your experiences are what shape what the series is to you. Right. Because, you know, certain people like certain part of the series, not so much because, oh, the story is fantastic, but maybe that's where they came into the series. Maybe Mm -hmm. there was some event that really, you know, links their life with that moment in time. And it's, it's neat to hear what everyone has to say with those types of things. And then just a lot of the background kind of articles that we did, uh, some research articles. I I really like how it turned out of, and not just being literally every person of here's my fandom, here's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's, we're going to give you information. We're going to give you somebody's take on something. We're going to give you somebody's experiences. We're going to talk about the series. It's And the way it all came together, I think it, it reads really smooth because it's not, not too bulky of like, okay, these 30 pages are just on this topic. And yeah, then yeah. It makes it a lot easier to peruse the magazine, I think. And I've read that a lot of people, oh, I just skimmed it to this and and that's what a magazine's for. That's what you should do. Yeah. Oh, man. That takes me back to my EGM days where I would get in the new issue and I would just literally flip through it to see, all right, where's such and such? I want to read that first. All right. Then I'll do exactly. my second pass where I look at my my B-list kind of material. And then I go back and actually read every single word. And it sounds like, I mean, this is just an online thing for now. And that's exactly what people are doing. And I love that experience where even though it is online, we're still kind of getting that that fresh oh it's shiny let me look for the most shiny thing that appeals to me yep and then i'll go back and kind of read more and learn more Uh, the things that you were talking about you basically wrote an article about that and at the same time you Mm -hmm. referenced so many other things like i heard you reference basically joe's article there which was he sums up by saying that no matter what it is whether he pops in an episode or plays a game those things have very distinct memories of a time attached to them. And I know we've talked about Christmas memories like real early on in the podcast. And I can, one maybe I talked about then, I can't remember. That was Budokai 2. I was, I, I guess I was still just barely in college. So I hadn't, moved out with Mary yet or anything. And we actually did not spend Christmas together that year. We I went and stayed with my parents and oh boo sad. And then you know we Aww. come back. Whatever. But so that was I remember those days. Yeah. Budokai 2 came out that holiday season. And so I remember <laughs> being alone at my parents' place halfway down the coast playing Budokai 2, being like, I want to be with my girlfriend instead. And you know like you do have those very distinct memories memories of whatever thing it is. And that's my Budokai 2 association. And I have many others as well. And I love that Joe talked about that. Um, do you want to talk about any of the research in particular that went on? I mean, you had your filler article. So can you hit that up real quick? Like what was, oh, that was interesting about that? What was interesting about that is for me, that's a project that started back Almost when I was, I'd say the end of my college career. Okay. Um, And it it was just always um, something that I've been interested in. And so I started putting numbers together and I still have the original Excel spreadsheet. I have so many spreadsheets. That that has all this stuff in it. I remember I would, I had printed out calendars from 1984 to 1995 and going back and circling dates and putting down, okay, this is when this issue of Jump came out. And that was long before Julie and I actually started going back and looking for the actual sale dates. Right. And that's when this really kind of hit full steam. So um, I'd say about six, eight months ago, I revised my Excel spreadsheet. And this is something that I've just, 
offhandedly been working on. And I just decided, you know, I, I don't really have anything written, but I have some graphs and some statistics and things like that. So I just kind of piece it all together. That was kind of a pain in the ass, actually. <laughs> it took took about a week and a half, I think, to really solidify kind of what I wanted to do with it. Mm-hmm. And then I think the most fun I had was actually making the graph so that it would match our article. Yeah, I remember you asking, what are the fonts? What are the colors? And then I got a yeah. PSD file like, wow, this not only did someone do an article for me, they made a graph in the right style guide. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I'm a little anal when it comes to things I like know, that. So. It meant a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, for me, I mean, I guess that's another story, kind of like what we told in the magazine. So now I'll, I'll always have that. But it, it was neat for me because it was something that I had started so long ago. Now it's actually seen the light of day right, and people can read it. To do it. Yeah, yeah. And, I yeah. Gotcha. and I think I kind of used a little bit of that. And then finally I was like, you know, besides just doing anything that's research based, I wanted to actually do that uh, introspective sort of thing. And, mm-hmm. and the funny part, though, I mean, we'll, we'll say this all the time. I know Julian and myself and I'm not sure about you, but I know at least the two of us had like a dozen other articles that we wanted to write totally. and yep. just did not have the time. I had a production all. deadline, man. Yep. So I was like, well, I guess we'll save this. And and I know Jake got bogged down and we got bogged down and yeah, yeah. then the news hit. And it right. was like, oh, you do now at the me. same time. <laughs> Something I can tell you is, um, so I, I want to say like 99% of the magazine is all new content. Like there's nothing repurposed. Even the... Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about issue date, publication date. Originally, I was just copying that text from the website. But you said, "No, I, I want to rewrite this." And so you literally it copied it, and I said, "You know what, Mike? I, I changed I'm, a couple. I'm going to rewrite that for you." But yes, that, that was nice. So I think the only thing that is carried over, pretty much as is, is my Jocko review, and that was admittedly just I got to the end, near the end of the schedule, I was like, "Oh, there's nothing about Jocko. Jocko is. If we're celebrating the manga, there's got to be something for Jocko in here." So I did cut it down a little bit, but I wanted to include that in there so that's kind of the only thing that's carried over but then if you notice there's one more page that we call Jocko one last look that was three short text messages from Julian yep. as we were just talking about what we we're including and he read the review one more time and he just had a couple of thoughts I wake up the next morning to a new article by Julian that's how that came to be and that's always fun I mean it I remember getting so many messages from Julian just bouncing ideas yeah yeah <laughs> You're keeping me awake. I would like to go to sleep. <laughs> I think we all said that to each other at some point. So I, I kind of want to bring it to a close because this, I hear it in our own voices. It's very self-congratulatory and I don't mean it to be that way, but I think we're just mm-hmm. so fucking excited about what we got to do here and what we were able to solicit from other people. I mean, we got Clyde Mandolin involved here who did the translation for the first TV series for Funimation. I was able to get Daryl Surratt from Anime World Order and Talkie USA to write an article about something that I loved hearing about from him over the years and I think it made a lot of sense to include here. Uh, I mean, I could just rattle off names that I was so excited to get in here. Like, even Greg. I mean, Greg, to me, is the guy who was running a website for about a year longer than I was and told me about the end of GT before I got my raw tape. Like, he's just someone that I think about in the the old DBZ guard capacity. I kind of forget that he's kind of a celebrity in the Shoeisha realm over in Japan these days. I know. What? <laughs> <laughs> and so to be able to include him meant a lot to me. And I know he was really excited. He was actually the first uh, outside article that I got. I was like, you know, here's kind of the word count I want. He was like, oh, okay. You know, uh, I want to get to this soon. It was the kind of thing where the next day is like, well, I wrote it. Here it is. And it's like, yes, I love when people are really excited. And that's how some of that stuff came to be. And I don't want to list favorites to play favorites, but everyone was awesome. I was, I was just really happy to see the collection of people that we got because I thought it was a very, I want to say broad perspective on on everything it could be more broad there are obviously some other folks i would like to include some other types of people i would like to include i I just could not get it done for this issue maybe if we do more maybe Mm -hmm. you know there's always tomorrow there is so the big question everyone's asking is and i've seen people run out and make their own is will there be a physical version of this that i can order my official response right now is 
I have nothing to say on the matter <laughs> right now. I would encourage people, if you are going out and printing your own, please don't do that for a couple reasons. One, you don't have the print quality version to make a print quality version. That's something that lives in hundreds upon hundreds of megabytes on various hard drives and backups with me right now. And also, you might want to stay tuned for stuff that may come in the future rather than making your own right now. I know. I was going to make Christmas presents for everyone, and then you totally took that away. <laughs> so mad. No. There's a lot of stuff that we would have to go through to perhaps think about doing something like that. It's one thing to release it for free. And like Toriyama said, just kind of do it and don't ask permission, just kind of doing it. It's very different when money enters the equation and yes. we have certain people at certain companies that very much scrutinize certain things that we do and have done over the years and are just waiting mm -hmm. for an opportunity to click send again on certain things. Always been very careful about having money enter the picture. Yes. So, so there's a reason we don't have ads on the main site. Yes. I'll, I'll say that. So right now, please stay tuned. Please understand. I'll leave it at that. There may be yeah. more in the future. This is really fun to do. I can't do it every month. I can't do a monthly magazine. Oh, come on, Mike. It may be one page. <laughs> yeah, it would be a newsletter at that point. So I want to leave it there. It's uh, This was a chance for us to get back into the show. And for those of you who actually only listen to the podcast have probably been like, what the hell just happened? Well, here's what the hell just happened. And we really encourage you to go check it out. So uh, please do. It's called DB 30 Years. You can find it linked off the homepage of our website. The cover art I was so excited to use done by Kim Herbst. I've I've never gotten such a squee text from you like <laughs> ever when we got approval to use this. So we saw this image being made as it was being made because Kim and my wife went to high school together and actually founded the anime club in their high school. So we've known Kim for years. Mary has known Kim for many, 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 many years. And uh, she's a huge anime fan. And um, she was you know, separately working on this image. And I saw Mary's, you know, she's looking at Facebook one day. She's like, oh, come look at what Kim's doing. I look at it and I go, must have this. Because honestly, the cover was the thing I was panicking about the most. What do I do for a cover? I can't draw. I can't do that kind of graphic layout on my own. Oh, God, someone please help me. And so when I saw that image, I said, well, long shot. I haven't really talked to Kim in years. <laughs> Will this work? And I was so um, thank you so, so much, Kim. It was amazing to be able to use that. I think it sets the tone precisely for what the magazine was intended to be and I hope what it is. So just, again, so many contributions from people out there. Please go check out the magazine. You can read it online for free. We have an interactive version that's hosted on Issue where you can actually just flip through it like it's a real magazine. Works great on computers. Works great on tablets. Even on phones, it's nice. Uh, you can download just, a, I call it a web-ready PDF. So it's not print quality, but it's just a regular PDF you can download. And we also have EPUB and Mobi file that you can download to your e-reader. So if you have a Kindle or a Nook, whatever like that. I know I only launched with the Mobi and someone totally called me out for not having the EPUB up right away. <laughs> yeah. And you're right, you're right. Thing is, I only have a Kindle, so I had to do extra testing myself to make the EPUB version. But that's up there as well. Completely free. Download it, read it, share it. Please share it. It's intended to be shared. It's a celebration of Dragon Ball. Thank you, Dragon Ball. <laughs> Thank you, Toriyama. I mean, that's pretty much what we have to say. We wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for the series in so many different ways. Oh, most definitely. So Heath, we kind of did a podcast again and my voice doesn't feel podcast ready. It's been, I mean, it's only one day of the week so far and I'm only working two days this week. It's Monday night. It's been a really long week for me already. <laughs> so my voice is kind of already shot. So I apologize for sounding kind of like 1998 Mike a little bit. I hear my voice cracking and squeaking. Part of that's excitement. Part of that's just a long ass day. But thank you for sticking with us. Uh, again, I can't promise we're going to get back to weekly right away, especially we have holiday week right ahead of us. Yeah, holidays kind of throw a wrench and everything. It's tough. And also right now, the daylight savings fiasco has us to, instead of flip the AM, PM, add one, it's flip the AM, PM, add two for me and Julian. So that mm -hmm. makes it 
you know, I have to get up earlier and he has to stay up later. So it's tough for us to arrange that. And then Jake's just in the weirdest time zone for any of us to try and coordinate. So I know. it gets tough, but uh, the podcast is not going. In. Don't worry about the podcast. We will always be with you. We're not going anywhere. But of course, the website is a central location. www.kanzenshuu.com. That's kanzenshuu.com. That's a website. That's the thing you're listening to right now. You go buy a t-shirt now, except we don't have t-shirts. We have magazines and you can't buy them it's for free so go read heath anything else you gotta say not really i'm i'm spent no this has been fun and we totally need to do this again it's been a pleasure and, let's uh, do this again sometime yeah give me a call let's let me give you my number i'll have my people call your people my secretary is tara she will just yell into the <laughs> See, I don't even remember how to end a show. I just keep babbling. Kind of. Like, this is what happens when you get Toriyama doing interviews, and this is when you get the bad answers. This is when you get the bad podcasts out of us when no one's Except around. We're not in track suits. Well, I actually am still in my gym clothes. You beat me. I'm still in my work clothes. <laughs> oh man! But I had a beer, so tell me what you're wearing and what you're drinking. I am not doing that. <laughs> We're not playing this game. Uh, <laughs> it's a very sexy game. So the other day, we were actually going to record this podcast yesterday, and you texted me, and I did not text you back. It was quick enough. I didn't know. Okay. I did not have a cell phone, so I had the pleasure of standing in Verizon for two hours. Awesome. That is always fun. Well, the question is, what phone did you end up with? What did you have before? What do you have now? Well, I had the, uh, Gal- or the Samsung Galaxy S4, mm-hmm. and it went for a trip in our washing machine. <laughs> so <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Um, so I ended up just upgrading to the S5. With the S5, yeah. So I was like, okay, sure. Yeah, uh, my son got sick on Saturday night, and he threw up all over me. So in my haste, I took off my coat and just threw it in the washing machine, only to realize 20 minutes later, I could not find my phone. <laughs> Children and phones and washing machines apparently don't mix. You know, for you younger ones listening, the perils of home ownership, the perils of being a parent, you have a lot to look forward to. Yep. So it goes. There's a lot of vomit involved. And then so they activated my phone and I had like 12 text messages and like 20 emails and I was just like, crap. Apparently that's what happens when you don't have a phone for like an entire 24 hours. Well, you're just so popular. I know. It was mostly Twitter. Every night Mary's always like, what is happening with your phone? Like, it's just like, usually it's Josh and Joe and Ryan. And somehow I get involved in a conversation that I'm not even a part of and I get quoted in all the responses like i don't know i'm i'm sorry i'm just Mm -hmm. popular on twitter or anything that gets tagged consent you on twitter sets off my phone yeah how was your phone when the magazine came out that was fun right that was fun it was just like wow that's a lot of retweets. Ah, well, hey, I appreciate that. That's what I was hoping for, and I was not let down. We're done. Konzenshu.com. It's been a pleasure, folks. Check out the website. Check out the magazine. This was something resembling a podcast. I promise you it's usually better than this. We don't know what we're doing. It's is been it, two months. Is it, I, I completely forgot. I There's no outline in front of me, so... No. It's usually structured. My voice is slightly deeper, even though I'm 32. My voice still sounds like I'm 17, and... Somehow I didn't get that wonderful you and Julian mm-hmm. have nice deeper voices. Yes. We're done. See you next time. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Enjoy 30 years. Don't forget to go watch Kai. It's a thing. Or forget to go watch it. That's fine, too.